The IRS recently introduced new rules for the 401k catch-up contributions for people over age 50. In this episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning, we'll talk about what those new rule changes are and how it might affect you. Hi, I'm John Shearer, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And before we start talking about the SECURE Act regulations, please subscribe. It helps us, uh, our YouTube algorithms, and helps more people find us. So, John, let's talk about the new rules that the IRS uh, put out. Uh, but first... Tell us about the Secure Act 2.0 and why these rules were even necessary. Well, yeah, let's. I'm, I'm going to take a step back if we can. You know, it sounds very exciting. I'm sure people, you know, IRS rules and catch up contributions. <laughs> I mean, what could be more entertaining, right? But it is important to know what's going on here. Yeah. And we tend to throw around, I don't think that catch up contributions are too much of uh, financial jargon. But we got to be clear we're not talking about the kind of sauce you put on your hot dogs or, or uh, and hamburgers. I guess you don't put them on your hot dogs in Chicago, right? It's not catch up that way, it's catching up. So what that what that rule has been in place for a while now, and what it says is that if you're over age 50, then you can put extra money into your 401k. And the thinking was, hey, if you didn't do it when you were in your 20s and 30s, but now you're in your 50s and 60s and you got to make up for lost time, it allows you to put extra in to be able to catch up with what you maybe should have done in previously. So it's an extra amount. I think the number for this year is $7,500 extra you can put in your 401k plan if you're over age 50. I've always got to look those rules up, but luckily they're easily accessible. But it's that, listen, I can put in addition to the regular contributions, I, because I'm over 50, can put an extra 7,500 bucks in to help me catch up with my retirement savings. So that's what we're talking about. We talk about this catch-up contribution, right? Yeah. And when I did the calculation, my estimate is it saves that doing that extra $7,500 in 401k, if you've got the money available to do it, saves people between, uh, say, $1,500 and $4,000 a year. Yeah, depending, depending on your tax bracket, right? And and this, thanks for do for saying that, right? Because here's this extra money. So what one thing is, all right, I want to save more than the regular 401k amount. I'm going to put that money somewhere because I need to get you know ready for retirement. Hey, the IRS, we we're able to do it in the 401k plan with this catch up provision. Okay, awesome. By putting it in there, then I get a tax deduction when I put money in my 401k plan, right? And by doing that, I save you know a couple thousand bucks in taxes this year, right? My tax bill goes down by, I want to save for retirement. I can do it on a tax deductible basis and life is good, right? So that's exactly, right. the, that's the foundation. That's what the, the things looked like in the past. When the Secure 2.0 Act came out last year, it said, listen, if your income is over a certain amount, when you make that catch-up contribution, the only way you can do it is via Roth 401k, not regular, right? And what th what that means is that when you put it into Roth, it's still, there's advantages in taxes, but you don't get the tax deduction today. In the future, when you take it out, there's no taxes. So to, to your point exactly, Bridget, what you lose today is that, what, two or $3,000 tax deduction but you get the promise of lower taxes in the future. And so that's what that's where this started is the new law, Secure 2.0 says you can't you can do the catch up, but it has to be Roth. So we get that tax money today, right? Correct. And that was supposed to start in 2024. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that's dun dun dun. Right. You know, yeah. They hey, passed the law no last December. <laughs> and then they said, okay, we got this year to figure out and get ready. 2024, here's this change. And I think what really happened is that in the industry, the people that run the 401k plans effectively complained and said, geez, this is a big burden to make these changes and to figure this stuff out. At the end of the day, what the IRS did with that is they came out here just a week or two ago as we're recording this and said, listen, that rule is going to stay in place. If you make over a certain amount, the number is $145,000. If my income is over $145,000 that from my salary, um, then I, you can't do a regular con catch up contribution. You can only do Roth, but we're going to push it off. Instead of it starting next January in 2024, it's going to start in January of 2026. So they kick the can down the road two years. Right. Yeah, so, and yeah, so not even just 2025. So they right. gave these both the companies and the 401k providers a lot more time. 
Okay. Right. The other curious thing to me is that there, I believe there'll be probably there'll be tax legislation in 2026. Uh, the new, the current tax regime expires uh, right around then. And so it could be in that mix too. It's possible, again, based on the complaints. I saw this years ago when they wanted to change the mileage rate in the middle of the year because gas prices were so high. So they yeah. wanted to reimburse people more for their mileage uh, through their taxes. And this like, oh, a lot of people couldn't get their head around this. Yeah, right. You know, it was going to be so difficult. So the, again, the IRS just gives people more time and then the lets the uproar die down and they look like the nice guys, I guess, or the nice people. Yeah, that's right. The that's people right. at the service. Yeah. So, so, the, so the big news is what's changed? Really, nothing has changed with the law, but it goes down again. It gets pushed back a couple of years, and as you said, right, we've got tax law changes coming in 2026. If Congress doesn't do anything, the law goes back to the old law back in what 2015 or 16, right? Tax rates go back right. to the old regime which might be impetus for this. So there's going to be a change one way or another where it goes back to the old way or they make a change today. Plus we're going to have this 401k catch-up contribution tax change kicking in at the same time. So there could be some interesting planning opportunities come the end of 2025 and into 2026. Speaking of that, let's talk about some tax planning opportunities or what comes with this particular rule. Now we can't do anything about it, right? It was going to be, hey, let's get ready for next year. Now it's let's get ready for 2026. But what's what are your what's your take on this this change from it being able to be a tax deductible catch up contribution to it being required to be a Roth contribution if your income is over that one forty five? Well, I in general, uh, when people are in higher tax brackets, I, at which and one forty five by itself does not imply a high tax bracket. However, I think that over 145 implies a lot of people in high tax brackets. So, and we looked up the numbers and if you're single, 145 is actually not kind of a high tax bracket, but if you're married, 145 and 145, what is that? 290, yeah. uh, it's not that high of a tax bracket. So um, the my point is that it depends on where your income is and it depends on where you're at. So some people are super safe super savers and they want to save as much money as possible. I guess I should put my glasses on. Um, so so some people are super savers and they want to put away as much money as possible. And I love the tax break for that. You know, the two to four thousand dollars a year that you get on putting the ketchup contribution in, it's like a bird in the hand. That tax break in the hand is worth a lot of taxes in the future. Yeah, you know, like there's a lot of talk that taxes are going to go up. Oh, we do X, Y, and Z because taxes are going to go up. And so much of it never comes to pass because uh, the politicians um, are playing that game that we all played when we were kids called kick the can. They're kicking the can down the road. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I haven't seen, I have heard taxes are going to go up uh, a lot. And I have seen it a few times. Uh, and then I don't see it <laughs> that right. often because it's right. hard politically to do. Right. Yeah. In the past 20 years, not many tax increases. Right. Right. And I, I take a little, you know, the, I take a little bit of a different approach. I'm all about taking tax deductions today. I think part of it is that we just don't know what the benefit is. Right. I do like that bird in hand theory on things. Um, but it's, it's one of those for me, like what's actionable on, on things. And to your point, and I've, over the years, our conversations, like we'll figure out what they, when the tax law changes, what to do, not anticipate what we think that the tax law might possibly be if something maybe happens sort of thing. Right. And so you go, listen, what can we do today? The reality of this is, as I look at it is starting in 2026, there is no other option. If you want to save more than the 401k regular limit, you can either put it into the bank account or into a brokerage account, or you can do this catch-up thing, but you have to do it the Roth way. Do I like the tax deductible one better? Yeah, may maybe, maybe not. I'm, I'm a little bit more up in the air on it than that. But the reality is it doesn't make any difference. There's no choice. If my income is, you know, especially significantly over the 145, the deal is if I want to save some money, I'd rather save it in Roth than in a brokerage account from the tax purposes. You go, okay, it's just, it is what it is, right? So from that standpoint, there's less about, you know, what to do there. One place where I do see that there could be some opportunities are if your income, and this is per person, because they look at your, you know, your wages, 
is if your income is really close to that 145, maybe there are some things that you say, listen, I'd like to get below that so I can take that tax deduction in things like what if um, you know, people like you and I that run our own businesses, you know, the difference between what our salary is, if it's 130 or 150, yeah, that hasn't made a whole lot of difference in the past. Now I might go, listen, I want to go back and take a look at that market data and make sure that I'm exactly in the right place. Cause maybe a few thousand dollars one way or another, where it didn't make a difference before from a tax standpoint, maybe it would make a difference here. So I'd be smart about that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the places anyway. And for people in that range, it'll be very interesting to see what the final regulations are. Does the 145 include what you've already put into the 401k? So is yeah. it effectively 145 plus whatever it is, 22,500? Right, right. Or yeah, some so, of those rules haven't been figured out with the past the law. We don't yeah. exactly know those things, right? So, but that's a that that's actually pretty significant, I would say. But that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The, like, the, the other place, that I was just saying the other place where it comes like it's when you run your own business, you have some control. If you're a, a regular employee, right, you're getting a paycheck every two weeks and, and say your salary is right around that number. Maybe you're in a position where you say, hey, I'm approaching retirement and, uh, you know, working 90 percent time would be appealing for my other goals or 80 percent right. of them would go to four days a week. And if that gets me under the 145 and it fits the rest of my financial planning, then you go, hey, maybe there's an opportunity there to do something too. So there are some places, but, you know, golly, if your income is way below or way above, you know, if your income is 200,000, you're not going to take a, ta a pay cut to get underneath and save $2,000 in taxes, right? So there are some places, <laughs> if you're close to that, pay attention. If you're way above or way below, it's probably like, okay, it's, it's a thing, right? You got to be aware right. of it, but not actionable. And uh, I think that's maybe a great place to wrap yeah. up here with things. So again, I'm John Shear. I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget Sullivan Rommel. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. John and I are both uh, taking new clients on right now, but if you're in another area and would like to speak with a local advisor, we're both members of ACP or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners, and there's me uh, members all over the country uh, who are fee-only comprehensive tax-focused financial planners. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. All right. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. <laughs>